after NCAD, um, I studied in Belfast College of Art and then finished up uh, in um, Artibus in Utrecht, where I also did a postgrad year. And then I returned to NCAD to do um, a further teacher's year. In the project sculpture exhibition, artist Helen Comerford really pushes her idea to the full expression of its own strength. Her hemispherical fibreglass form, wall mounted, straining through a loosely draped cloth, is really moving. The work shares some of Christo's concern with the reality of form behind the outward wrapping, whether material or psychological, but has an extra thrust of energy from the connotations of pregnancy and birth, a womb wrapping expressed in a clear form and clear material, the natural milky oatmeal colour of the fibreglass. Uh, this, is, this was all in fibreglass and then I started to use muslin, I started to use muslin impregnated with resin. Um, and I, I was doing an awful lot of, uh, I was making unknowingly a lot of autobiographical references, uh, like, uh, you know, tearing the muslin or tearing the fibreglass, um, showing open wounds and bleeding. I found that it eliminated distractions, that in working with these silver and blacks that I was able to focus in a different way. Four Kilkenny artists. Helen Comerford's management of space and light is impressive. Her sense of theatre allows her to focus attention exactly where she wants it. Her installation is curtained off in a darkened room at the end of the gallery. You enter. A circle of grey seated female figures seem absorbed in their own concerns. The atmosphere is musty, dry. The symbolism, primeval gathering, powerful female form, wholeness, dust to dust, is direct, yet its theatricality engenders expectations and the hollowness of the figures parallels a sense of general incompleteness. I know that growing up in Thomastown I had uh, complete freedom to roam and so I was always uh, by the river or exploring. Um, I'd go to the woodwork shop next door, I'd wander around the bakery um, looking at all the textures and um, it was a very rich childhood. Um, 
I remember my grandmother, for instance, occasionally she would make this absolutely revolting looking but uh, incredibly good black pudding and uh, she would send me to the abattoir to get blood. For what seemed long periods I would, during holidays or after school, go to my relations' slaughterhouse behind their butcher shop, the waste pipe poured directly into the river. Although I could never bring myself to stay for the shot on the forehead, I would watch for hours, alternatively fascinated and revolted by the whole process. The particular sound of the skinning, of flesh parting with pelt, the hot smell of blood, the colours as flesh yielded to bone, the hands of the butchers as red as the flesh they handled, and their language as coarse as the green contents of the entrails they sluiced into the river. I would go every day until my revulsion would overcome my fascination, and I would tear myself away until some months later, when the whole process would start again. As a child, I unknowingly followed a long family tradition of counting everything. I knew how many steps there were on the stairs, how many candles on the altar at high mass. I delighted in mental arithmetic, savouring the mental agility it took to keep all those numbers in my head. The first time that I cross-referenced a sum, I clearly remember my delight in the constancy of the numbers. Later, when I was mixing with mathematicians and physicists and queens, I understood the concept of the elegance of the solution while not being capable of following the reasoning. When I came across sacred geometry and the famous quote that the whole universe is number, there it all was. When, when I read these descriptions of how the Greeks and I think even older uh, regarded the, the planets and their relationship to the earth, Comerford's persistent challenge to macho modernism makes for deceptively conceptual work, here shown as a litany to the planets, but as much a commentary about complementarity, balance and the quest for harmony. Perfectly made beach pods look like the discreet offerings of an Amish woodturner, but open sensuously as a walnut shell into two separate worlds, each holding different materials and metaphors. An almost mathematical aesthetic variously links gold leaf graphite, mercury and wire thread to the elemental properties of particular planets, thriving on a delicate ecosystem where metals and the blow-away beauty of a leaf can live side by side. Folds of blackened paper recall an earlier series of wall works, voluptuous yet disciplined, reminding you of the myriad possibilities held by the tiniest structures. I always uh, work through the material I think, and I'm very interested in, in the truth of the material and, in a sense, extracting what that material can say.
Um, I, I, I think that I've always had this huge affinity um, to water. Uh, the, the, the family myth of my birth was not that I was born under a gooseberry bush, but that I was born, born under the bridge of the mill stream um, in the house where I grew up. So um, I, I always had this huge connection to water. And when, whenever I was lost, uh, people would first sort of search by the river and, and usually find me. Um, in some way there. And then uh, we spent uh, pretty well every summer um, in, in Dunmore East or Duncannon or Tremor, where I spent long, long hours sort of foraging in the rock pools. And I'm sure that did more than feed the family shrimp.